Hello, this will be the first and only video either on the internet or uh, on YouTube to accurately tell you what is the basis for chromatic aberration. Now, there's plenty of descriptions about what chromatic aberration is, and of course there are infinite calculations on how to correct for chromatic aberration, as Canon, Nikon, and Zeiss all know. They all know how to correct for the refractive index of any lens to eliminate to the greatest extent possible chromatic aberration. But, what is the reason for chromatic aberration? Well, how many photographers are experts in field theory? Well, the answer is none. So what is the real cause of chromatic aberration. Let's first take a look at chromatic aberration. Some people call it purple fringing. So here you can see the uh, blue fringing on an object and the purple fringing on a palm. Um, sometimes you'll actually see it as red. It's uh, where, let me actually show you an instance here of a single lens element of chromatic aberration. What we have is a shorter wavelength, higher frequency, light, blue light, uh, having greater index of refraction than the uh, than the longer wavelengths such as the mid-range the green and obviously the longer range the red so what is the case well as is the case I don't know if you've ever had a glass bowl explode in your microwave but it's not because of the heat that your glass bowl exploded in the microwave your microwave works off EM radiation excitation of the molecules in your food now, you may or may not know this. Remember those old glass uh, insulators that are on the power lines? Sometimes, once in a while, actually the electricians, uh, the electrical line workers would bitch and moan about having to replace those because sometimes there'd be a spike in the voltage, which is a spike in the dielectric capacitance of the power feed lines. Now, we don't use those old type insulators anymore. We still use glass insulators on power lines, you can actually see them up there. Some of them are actually uh, opaque, some of them are actually clear. But what it is is that uh, clear materials have dielectric capacitance, whereas shiny materials like silver, copper, gold are dielectric reflectors. We use those as uh, energy transmission lines, but of course the transmission line, the voltage occurs between the wires, not down through the wires, whereas we have amperage occurring around the wires, which would be analogous to magnetism, and uh, longitudinally, uh, in a shorter compression between the lines, that would be a dial. Anyway, let's get to the short. Let's get the short nitty gritty here. Let's uh, take a look at red light through a lens. Okay, and this would be our focal plane over here. Okay, here we go. So now let's drop our blue light through the same lens and what we get is the issue of chromatic aberration where we do not have the blue focused at the same place. We have our blue focused here. This would be our blue light. Okay, what's the quickest way? And I showed you in a prior video the Leyden jar experiment where actually glass is the capacitor from an electrostatic generator, what's not actually holding the char, the charge in the Leyden jar is not uh, the insulator of the jar because the insulators are taken out and uh, it's shown that there's no charge uh, in the interior cathode or the exterior anode. The charge is in the glass, this dielectric capacitance. So what causes the bending of this light? What's kind of an easy way? I was trying to think of a simple way to explain it so people wouldn't have like a brain fart. You know, talking about dielectricity and uh, amperage and voltage and uh, I was trying to think of a really simple analogy. I love these 150 year old slate chalkboards. Say we got two cars running across an oil slick here. One's going say about 50 miles an hour. They're all going in a, tur a curve which would be a, uh, a temporal curve. This is all relative to uh, electromagnetic retardation by the way very complex and yet ultimately very simple. Say we got a car, let's say this is a red wavelength uh, light traveling across an oil slick here which is represented by the glass. So it's traveling at 50 miles an hour for example. It gets refracted only so much because it's only going at a certain speed. Now here we have uh, the speed demon the blue light with a higher uh, dielectric capacitance speeding across the same oil slick in a curve at say 150 miles an hour. What happens is just like someone's actually taking a, a turn 
on a uh, a slick roadway too fast you know what happens when the, someone takes a turn on a, a, wet road, a wet roadway that's going too fast yeah they end up spinning out so here we have our blue wavelength of light and here, here we have our red wavelength of light and right here in the middle we'd have our green which is actually pretty much right between red and blue so far as capacitance now the nature of light now how it's actually corrected for this is a flint or achromatic elements such as this and what these do you can actually see these in lens diagrams what these do is it bends back the electromagnetic retardation of the blue light as it passes through the glass elements back in line such that both red green and blue are passing through the same focal plane this is the flint element the secondary achromatic element to correct for the refractive index of this element here but nobody has ever explained to you before what actually causes chromatic aberration they say well it has to do with the refractive index of the lens which is corrected by a flint element a uh, corrective uh, secondary achromatic doublet the secondary element a flint element but that's a description that's not explaining what's actually going on you have to ask yourself well you've just described something and there are tons of empirical data for correcting for the refractive index of glass because this is how Nikon and Zeiss and Canon correct for chromatic aberration with that secondary doublet element or they actually change it also by changing the variable focal length it's a little bit more complicated but these are descriptions these are not explanations so this is the first time you'll actually ever hear what causes the bending the refraction if you have the best glass in the world okay the best that money can buy you still have electromagnetic retardation because up here here's an example of our red frequency and wavelength of light and what happens is reciprocal to the transverse electromagnetic reciprocations is a dielectric pulse this is why UV light is dangerous okay this is why blue spectrum light starts heading towards gamma okay not very very far past blue wavelength light we have gamma okay gamma will kill your ass in a heartbeat um, blue wavelength light will actually hurt you a lot faster than infrared will why because the capacitance here's something else you don't know the smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. This is the nature of electromagnetism. That means you can actually store greater capacitance the smaller the space. The inverse is the case with magnetism, which is relational to amperage. The larger the space, the more the amperage. The smaller the space, the higher the voltage. This is what happens if the power lines actually ever go out down the street. What happens is here we have two posts, here we have the power lines going down the street like this. If the uh, power drops, the actual uh, lines will come back together because the magnetism was pushing them apart. But if there's ever an issue where there is uh, more voltage applied to the power lines, what happens is they actually pull themselves closer together. Here's the most important diagram in the entire universe. Here we are looking down two power lines, looking as they go down the line. Here are the two most, this is the most important diagram in the universe. If we were to talk to, say, uh, some alien species in another galaxy and we were to draw out this diagram and they were advanced, they would immediately know what you're talking about. Remember, this is power lines looking down, okay? You're looking down the power lines, like end on of the cables, right? Here we have this. This is our voltage. This is our dielectricity. These are lines of capacitance. And here are our amperal. Here is our amperage. These are the lines of magnetism actually going, reciprocating around. By the way, if you actually draw this out like this, you end up with a perfect magnet. This is a dielectric inertial plane. And here we have our magnetism reciprocating out centripetally and centrifugally out either side. What's this important to chromatic aberration? I thought you might be interested in field theory. What actually causes, let's get back to lenses since a lot of you people are going, oh shut up, I don't care, I watch this crap for the photography. I'm only interested in the photography. Well, I thought you might be interested in this. What causes 
chromatic aberration is that it doesn't matter how expensive the glass is to correct for that chromatic aberration okay there are a few different methodologies each lens has its own refractive index but what happens is in short is that blue wavelength light has higher capacitance and it's just like a fast driver going into a turn across an oil slick and what happens to that blue light is it gets refracted more than the red light so here's our blue light right it gets refracted more it as focal length we oh here's our ideal focal plane right here okay our blue is ahead of that that's because the blue has been retarded remember electromagnetic retardation which has nothing to do with relativity by the way the last part of that book was about the refutation of relativity because relativity is about space and time space and time are neither field nor force that entire book by Dr. Olaf de Jefferminko is the refutation of relativity and talking about simplex field uh, theory a la Tesla, Heaviside, Steinmetz and Faraday now let's look at our red light what happens to our red light it intersects at the perfect focal plane here so here we have the focal point of our red light and here we have the focal point of our blue light oh my god we got chromatic aberration because the blue is focusing sooner than the red light this is the X this is why also your uh, your clear salad bowl or whatever clear bowl it is you stuck in the microwave explodes you can actually these uh, old time, they don't use them anymore, but the, uh, the glass insulators, they sell them in antique shops. Sometimes they would actually violently explode on the power lines due to an increase in voltage. That's dielectric capacitance. Glass has dielectric capacitance. If it's clear, like glass, it is a dielectric capacitor. Now your glass isn't exploding in the microwave because it's getting hot you might think that or the food's gotten too hot and it's just encountered an air bubble or an imperfection of glass that's actually incorrect now a lot of that has been corrected for but I mean I've had it my, uh, my glass bowls and blow up in the microwave I don't know maybe 20 times throughout my life you probably have too but it has nothing to do with heat it has to do with the EM that's actually bombarding your food and what happens is that the, the uh, dielectric capacitance has gotten to a point or focused at a point especially in the old bowls they stopped making bowls with bubble elements they're actually dielectric lenses and they'd actually concentrate the capacitance at a certain point and the glass bowls in the microwave would explode and then they ended up creating microwave safe glass so <laughs> it wouldn't happen it has different properties that dissipate the capacitance and therefore they don't explode in the microwave so what do exploding bowls in your microwave have to do with chromatic aberration has one and the same thing it is one in the same thing the blue light gets refracted more because per UT unit of time we have more dielectric capacitance in higher frequency light such as blues and purples than we do in lower frequency light such as red that is why lenses have to be corrected with flints and uh, also uh, achromatic elements of the flint or an achromatic element to take the blue light and refocus it such that the focus between the two uh, converge at the same focal plane by the introduction of an achromatic element now of course there are endless equations for correcting from a for chromatic aberration but this is the only video and the only place on the world that you will read what is the actual actual explanation what is the true cause behind electromagnetic retardation of blue light through a piece of glass in your lens it is that the capacitance is much higher in blue light and it gets retarded more as it passes through the glass just like a fast speeder gets thrown off more as he rounds a, cur a turn on like a, a wet roadway analogously to make it really simple if that helps you understand it anybody anyway thanks for watching you've finally been the first person in the world to learn what really causes chromatic aberration